Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to be doing a brake overhaul on this ZX750 of ours. The front and rear brakes are going to be completely rebuilt, stripped and rebuilt. Um, we've not had this bike long. It's been kept by the previous owner in a damp environment and not used quite a lot. So I, we expect to see a bit of carnage when we uh, strip those brakes. Now, I didn't intend on this being a tutorial video, a how-to video, but I figured because I'm doing it anyway, I might as well uh, video it and publish it so you can watch me service the brakes and hopefully um, find something useful for yourselves out of it. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll get started, shall we? Um, the brakes on this Kawasaki are absolutely shot. They are in terrible condition. This is what happens to a bike that has not been serviced or well maintained and this app also happens to a bike that has been stood in a damp garage, damp environment and not used for quite some time. These pistons in here, they're in a terrible state as you can see. There's corrosion and rust on them. The seals, if we can just focus on that, let's see if we can get focused on it. You can see those rubber seals are gunked up with crap. And all inside there, there we, are, there we go. All that crap and spooge. I mean the the dust seals are basically popping out. Now this bike did stop, but uh, it took a while to stop <laughs> due, to, due to this fact, you can clearly see why. Um, so anyway, we've got ourselves a all balls seal kit. I think that's for the rear. We're gonna do the rear one next. This is for the front caliper. Um, I've not got pistons in this kit, but the pistons are pretty shot. I'm going to clean these up, these pistons. They're not pitted, they've just got surface rust. If you give them a rub, it does actually, it does actually loosen off. So I'm going to get these pistons out, get everything in this dish and cover it with the uh, parts wash. But, yeah, I mean, old bikes stood in one place for a long time. This happens, so... If you're having trouble with your brakes, you need to keep on top of them. And it's okay getting a low mileage bike that has been stood for a while, not used, but this is what you expect from it when it's been in a damp garage. So keep them moving. Right. Get these seals out, these pistons out, and uh, see how clean we can get it. So I almost forgot, here's a tip for removing the pistons. Um, what I do, I mean you can use compressed air and shoot it through any of the orifices. Compressed air to shoot the pistons out, but when, when they're in a state like this, when they're badly corroded, they might be stiff. Um, so what I do, when it's attached to the bike, I will trap, uh, I'll remove the brake pads and, put a, and trap a spanner in between here, in between both the pistons work the lever to force all these pistons out so when all the pistons are at the highest point then i'll move on to the next caliper then what i'll do is i'll drain the fluid out and split these apart of course all the pistons should now be in the upright longest extended position but to get them out you can sometimes pull them out with your fingers or like i said use compress force compressed air down uh, down here or down here sometimes and it will push them out but when they're stuck like this you need a tool you need to use some tools that are not going to damage the pistons if, you, if you're not replacing them i use um these welding uh clamps like this right here i go so you just set these welding clamps on here you can then just gently pull the pistons out like so. We'll check these pistons after just to make sure that they aren't damaged and we forgot to replace them then we'll replace them. I never knew on these Tokiko calipers that two of the pistons are actually smaller so are they all the same size? First time I've done these. Let's have a look. Yeah, so these ones, the bottom ones, are actually smaller. I wonder why they did that. 
on the calipers. Right, anyway, so I'm going to get some parts cleaner on these, let them soak, and get all the rubber seals out. And then uh, whilst that's soaking in here, I'll get the pistons all cleaned up and see if they are of any reusable state. If they're, if they're all damaged, like I said, I'll replace them. But we'll see. See you in a moment. Right, so I've given these a final clean in the dishwasher uh, and they've come up lovely, there's no debris left in those. There's a little bit of tarnishing on the metal surface but they're uh, they're nice and clean and all that, that junk and gunk that was well in there is now gone. Right, so now we're going to get the seal kit in. Get the seals in, build them back up and uh, get them back on the beastie. And then get the back brake done, the rear brake, because that's that's going to be just as bad, I reckon. Okay. So I've got all the seals laid out. We don't want to worry about these bits yet, the pins and things. Um, we don't need those. We've got our dust seals, and these are the caliper seals themselves, and dust seals and caliper seals. Uh, I've tried the pistons, made sure that they all fit. They should be loose because, as obviously, when they get inside the calipers that's when they grip the pistons so they all fit perfectly now sometimes seals will have a log a stamp or a number on them and that can determine whether which way around that some seals go uh, sometimes seals have a tapered edge these appear to not have anything but sometimes they can have a tapered edge and that's what that's what makes a seal pull the piston back back down into the caliper as it's been compressed uh, I can't, honestly these don't look like they have a a tapered edge on them so we're just going to wing it go for it and get them stuck in there I've given these a clean out with some brake cleaner because obviously I put them in a dishwasher yesterday and I don't want to leave any any salts to corrode the aluminium or anything like that so I've given those a clean to make sure they're good to go uh, so they don't rot from the inside basically and uh, yeah right Where's the the grease? Let's get them in. Okay, it's a little awkward from this angle with the camera. But so you have to manipulate them around. Never use anything sharp so you don't want to risk piercing the seals. We've got a fighter here. Nearly there. There we go, that's one. That's one in there. That one went easy. So always remember to put the dust seals in last, don't get them mixed up. It's not that you can anyway, they're different size. So. Oh, that went in nice and easy, it's a little twisted that one, so we're going to give him a, I'm going to straighten it out. That's all the seals in, I'm just going to put these dust seals in, finish them off. And then uh, we'll get the pistons in. So I'm sorry if this video's not exciting, but I thought while I'm doing this, I might as well vlog it. You know, might be handy to some people. Right, so. I'll just run my finger around them, make sure they're all seated before I go any further. Oh, 
Put those to one side. Now we'll get the grease. So first of all, I'm going to grease the pistons. You don't need a great deal. Okay. Let's get these in then. So I'm going to go very gently. That one went in nicely. Get rid of some of this grease. Very gently. No. Little one, there's a little one. A little bit too much grease on there. I don't need that much. So that's one done. Easy job. They're all done. All in, so we'll get these stuck together now. So with the remainder of this grease, I'm just going to put it all over these retaining bolts because I don't like to waste things. It'll only, only go in the bin, so let's get these nice and protected. Don't want them seizing into the calipers. Not that, I mean, I probably won't rebuild these calipers ever again in my ownership. They'll last a long time. And I'm assuming that these old seals are factory fitted, what I've taken out. Right, very good, very good. Okay. Get these together, shall we? I'm just going to put a little, little bit of grease. I'll come around here. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on these just to hold them in place. If you look on the calipers, this side, the inside caliper, has a deeper recess there for the seals to sit in. Where's the other one? There it goes. going to tighten these all the way just whoa. I'm going to seat them
Right, now we'll get the torque settings in. Should be ready to put the pads in. All done. So, I'm going to have a drink of coffee in my McLaren mug. I got this mug when I bought myself a McLaren. Not. I do like McLarens. Uh, right, okay. What's next? The strangest thing is, you see those little slots cut in the bolt there, the nut or whatever. Um, usually that marking means it's an end, it's a left hand thread, which is quite strange. Let's see if it is a left hand thread. No, it's not. I wonder why they've done that. Right, so that wasn't a too hard job. I'm going to get the pads put in now, the exciting part. I love coffee and I love my Project X coaster. Right, so before I put these pads in, I give my hands, my gloves a thorough clean because I don't want grease contamination all over them. Now I'm not going to touch the actual surface, the friction surface. Keep my hands away from that. I'm going to spray these in brake clean after anyway. I've just changed angles because it's easier for me to work like this. Right, that's that done. Let's get these whacked on the bike, then bleed them. As you can see, it is just as important to clean those out as it is the calipers as well. Because they are disgusting. Can you believe all that? All that was inside the caliper. A lot better that. So we don't want to forget these retainers. Most of the time when I put bikes back together, I end up with a box of spare parts. So what I want to do is spread these pads apart like that. And be fiddly, they do fall back together. I'm just going to manipulate them in. That's all right. We're all together, I will talk those up later. So bleeding brakes is not the nicest of jobs sometimes. Um, it does help when you've got one of these vacuum pumps but it can get very messy. What I've done here, I've got a link pipe 
And I've stuck that on both calipers. I'm going to crack them both off, get some fluid poured in them, and then give it a few pumps and drag all the air out and crack. Let's give it a go. So at the minute, all that fluid is dropping. It's draining down. Any moment now, it'll come out of here. I'll see if I can do two in one here. Yeah. Oh, these bleed nipples are right behind the brake hose, which is annoying. Right, well, I'm gonna Crack on with this procedure. It's all coming in there, look. When this is bubble free, we'll give them a test. Almost overflowed that. I'm gonna stand guard up here because it's actually flowing through on its own now pretty quickly. Let's have a look. What I'll aim to do soon, when it's had a good bleed, um, I'll close off the bleed screw on the other side and then lock this one off and see if there's any pressure there. Well, we've still got no pressure, but the air is flooding out of there. You give this a gentle squeeze, it's got compression, but a quick one, it seems to be slack. So I think there's still air trapped in there. Um, usually, I'll leave this on a vice grip or tie wrap it shut all night. And then by the time you come to in the morning, it should help release some of the air out of there. Right, okay, on to the rear brake now. Uh, to access this cylinder, I've removed the seat and I'm going to get to it this way. So I've took the cap off of that. Look at the state of that. Oh my god. That is, it looks like honey. Okay, so we're going to bleed all that out. I've attached my hose under there. I'll crack that off and just get rid of all that crap. Use the vacuum pump to suck it all out. Just get rid of all of this. Now sometimes if the pads were good, I was just doing a fluid change, I could um, just pour fresh fluid in the top and keep bleeding it out until it runs clear. I've done that before, usually flushes it and uh, that way you're not fighting with the air all the time. There it goes, all that liquid toffee. You can hear that now, all done. Well, that was pretty loose, not good at all. 
And the caliper wasn't tight at all. Scary stuff. Right, so the pads aren't particularly worn down on the rear brake, but they are disgusting. Uh, on this caliper, you've got two bleed nipples, so one for that side, one for that side. So I'm not forgetting that if you're ever going to do some brake bleeding on these brakes, then uh, you might ha you may have trouble just bleeding one nipple and then still not getting air out, not realizing there's another one on the other side. In my opinion, these probably will be best off um, hung vertically, but we're going to do it on the bike like we did with the other one. Right, let's strip this apart then. So first of all, this little cover. We'll just simply flip away like that. Then we've got our pins. Let's see if these are loose in there. I think we may have one stubborn one. Yes, we do. We'll probably have to get the more grips on that to get it moving. Right, so splitting the calipers has been a little bit of a challenge. This bolt came out fine, but the other one was absolutely rock solid. It was literally welded in, so the only way of getting it out, luckily I've got a TIG welder, so I welded this bolt to it and off it came. Only thing is that's knackered now. So a new set of bolts for those. Luckily it's, it's not damaged any of this. So, But this is in an absolute appalling condition. Um, the pads, obviously used. The, and this pin, this is stuck in there as well, but I don't think I'll have trouble getting that out. I'm just gonna jiggle it with the pliers. Right, let's continue. Oh, oh, oh. look at all that crap in there. I'm going to focus there, look at all that rubbish there, oh my god. Getting that right in my fingernails. Excuse, me, excuse the cinematography. Yeah. Disgusting. To think it got through an MOT. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm having trouble focusing today. Right, there we go. Right, I'm going to get this pin out. That's the next challenge. Right, so I've got myself a little problem. Um, this pin will not budge. I'll tell you why, the reason why I put all these washers and spacers on there in a minute, but the pin will not budge. It has seized in there. Uh, I've, I've been very aggressive with the mole grips trying to get it out. So it's not exactly damaged in any way um i can still use it uh so i don't want to hack it off and drill it out nothing like that so i'm going to try and weld these collets to it and perhaps i might weld this nut to this spacer and then give it a crank with a spanner the heat from the tig welder should hopefully help that to expand as it goes Lovely and uh, lovely and bright. Okay.
Yeah, it's moving, all right. Well, almost broke the camera, but got him out nice, didn't we? Right, so we're back on track now. We've got all those pins and bolts out, all the seized ones, thanks to the TIG welder. Um, so let's get the calipers cleaned up and get the seals put in. Right, I do apologise if you're bored of seeing this table, but... Um, the garage is working progress at the moment. I'm going to get a nice workstation set up. I'm just using these lovely benches that I created. I need to tidy up. Nothing worse than working in crap. And get rid of all this. These retaining pin clips are all all in a poor state. I'm going to check the packaging now. I'm going to check the package. See what we're getting this all balls kit. So luckily, yes, we have the pins, and I can still use the old pin if I want to. And we have a turning clip number one. That's this one. Have we got the other two? No. What have we got? Right then. Two. So we've got two of those pins. Oh, this is the dust cover, another dust cover, and we have the whatever seal that is called, and yeah, dust seals. So we don't have these, but I'm sure we can clean those up, grease them, and make them nice and shiny again. Um, there's no bleed screw in here there was in the front yeah there's no bleed nipples in this all balls kit so I will clean these up now it is a good idea to keep the old ones clean them up nice let them soak in um, you can let them soak in petrol or any degreaser the ones you get with the all balls kit are pretty poor the ones I've used on the front calipers are pretty, pretty poor. I wouldn't recommend using them because they've barely got any ferrule here to, to for the pipe to grip on. They're just like that. So when you put the pipe on there, it just wants to peel its way off. So I would say all balls need to put better bleed screws in their packages but we will use the old ones we'll clean those up right i've just moved on to my welding bench because this is an incredibly messy job i'm going to use the old welding vice grips to pull these out Not as messy as I thought. And just like that, everything is out. You can see all that contamination and crap inside there. Preventing your brakes from working. So, Another session with these, we'll get them cleaned up, stick them in the dishwasher, come back to them in the morning. All right. Okay, so I've got a problem, but I've also got a solution, and I'm going to show you what the solution is to the problem. Now, I'm rebuilding these brake calipers, but I have a problem. I've had several problems with these, with stuff being seized and having to be... Uh, heated up and removed and welded to remove things. Um, so I've not got any replacements to these retaining bolts which fasten both calipers together. As you may have seen, this one was heavily seized in so I had to 
The only way of getting it out was uh, welding another bolt to it, thus introducing some heat will help this to expand and release this seized bolt. But now this bolt is will appear useless, but I've got a solution for that. I could order some new bolts, and I probably will do in the future, but right now I want to get this back together. And I'm all keen for ideas. So I've not got a bolt this size. I do have a spare bolt box. And this is my spare bolt box. These are all nuts and bolts and parts left over from motorcycles I've built in the past. Um, well, the parts I've replaced, not parts I've forgot to put back in. Or oh, that would be catastrophic. But uh, it's good to keep all some of these old nuts and bolts and things and seals because you never know when they might come in quite handy. Uh, so, there's not one for this size in there. There's some near enough, but I think this is an M10. So what I'm going to do, the plan is, to get this in my V-block, my magnetic V-block, and I'm going to cut the head off of this, tap a little thread on it, that way I can slightly screw this nut on there, and then with the TIG welder, I'm going to weld this nut on it and make myself a new bolt. And that will hopefully hold the calipers together until a replacement bolt arrives. Don't have to do it, I can buy a new bolt, which I will, but there's nothing wrong with a few little ideas. Get you out of a sticky situation. Let's give it a try. Right, I'll give that a clean up on the grinding wheel. So I put a little chamfer around the edge of that to help the tap start cutting. Right, apologies people, but I've put the thread on the nut and tightened it on there, probably about one or two turns just to lock it level in place. Uh, the camera wasn't recording, so I've cut the thread on it and I put it on there. I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me do it again. Uh, so, right. I'm going to give this a clean down now with some alcohol and get this welded and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we'll try not to warp it. I'm going to, I'm going to set the TIG to about 50 amps. That should cover it. So give this a clear down with some alcohol. Get rid of any any contaminants. I'm also going to give my filler wire a clean. Use this end.
looks all right that. That was red hot, you could literally brand yourself with that, it's so hot. It looks level, so I'm gonna grind grind that down. Looks alright that. Right then, that's all finished, all welded up. We're gonna try this in the caliper, see how it fares up. Um, it's just a temporary fix until we get the proper bolt for it. It looks like a bolt now, doesn't it? We've welded that up and ground it down nice and nice and even, got rid of the excess metal. Let's give it a try. So we've managed to seat that nut um, right on the top of that bolt there just so we don't lose any length and it's almost the exact length of the original one and what i will do is put a washer under this just so when we tighten it up we don't scrape around the caliper i'll give it a try okay so same as before i'm checking these to see if they are tapered they don't appear to be so we're going to get them in these are nice and big, so it should be pretty simple to fit. Look at that, yep. Straight in. The oil seal. Looking in nice as that. Making sure there's no debris left over in there. Nice and easy. Right, okay. Pistons. A little bit of grease. Still never got that out. Again, try and get it in nice and even. I'm not putting much grease on this time. It's gone. I felt it pop. Let's even press him in. There it goes. Next thing is this little o ring. A slight bit of grease on there, just to hold it in place. Okay. So we have here the magic bolt. I've put a washer on there and I've coated this with some anti-rust paint. That's why it's black. Uh, I've poured some onto it, well, well dipped it, and then I've stuck the washer in there so it sets underneath it. Um, I'm gonna coat this with grease just like the other one because we do not want these to seize. I don't think I'll be replacing the seal kit again. However, we don't want to risk 
this seizing in for the future. I'm going, I'm going to cut the end, the tip as well, all of it. Right. And we'll see. We'll see how this fares up here. Eh? Give this a little tight. Right, so it's time for the pads now. I'm surprised I didn't get these little clips in the all balls kit. Tight sods, aren't they? Let's drop those in there. Excuse me if I go off camera a little bit. I'll try my best. You're tricky and fiddly. One. There you go. Not really fiddly. Okay. Where's my retaining clip? It looks like now. And these are practically ready to go. The bleed nipples are installed on both sides. Um, I'm going to get this on the bike now and bleed it through. I could do it on the bench, but I'd have to remove all the braking components. So I'm going to get this mounted on the back on the bike and see if it leaks. Okay, so that feels like it's got nice compression and uh, I'm just going to do a little bit more on the front there. So we're all done. The brakes have plenty of compression now. The front one's good to go and the rear one, well, that just had loads of compression. I might have to adjust the travel on that now. Um, it's possible, it seems to be pretty solid, but we don't want this to get hot and then end up binding. Um, what you probably find is sometimes people, uh, as the the brakes get worse over the years, they might adjust the plane to give it give it more compression. Um, then what happens, the problem is uh, once you put new pads and fluid in, they end, they, they, there's no free play left and it ends up causing problems. I'm going to get new levers for it, um, the standard levers. I don't mind standard levers, it keeps it original, but it you can't adjust the free play on these. You can only adjust the, the, the space between the grips on this one. What you'd find with levers as they wear, I mean, this one's 
got a bit of play in it here so it is worn it looks okay but it is worn there and what happens the wear behind here as well so that ends up being a little bit of a problem because it could, that can affect the free play and give it more travel so yeah they do wear out behind here as it, so as it stops basically uh, that's me done we'll get it out on the road and uh, test it adios Fire. But we always get what's required